You may remember I said I would tell you a little bit about non-linear capacitors. This capacitor is linear, that is the uh, the vanes are mounted centrally about the shaft so as we turn the shaft uh, so the, the vanes move smoothly and evenly uh, so if we have it here then we can say that we've got uh, half of the capacitance engaged if we have it there we've got all of the capacitance engaged um, and it's proportional so as we move uh, the, uh, the tuning knob or the dial so as the capacitor engages further into the fixed vein so as the moving veins engage into the fixed veins so the capacitor increases proportionally and that, that's fine that, that's good and um, this capacitor by comparison doesn't um, the if you look at the difference between these two the shaft is in the center of that span here the shaft is off center a bit difficult to see but I'll see if I can make that a little clearer okay I've made two capacitors here admittedly they're out of paper so I've got a movable vein there pivoted about the center this represents my fixed vein and again my second capacitor there it moves off center and this is my fixed uh, capacitor plate there so if I start off with them both at the bottom so we'll call that uh, uh, zero degrees I'm trying to work around the tripod here um, so if we move this one into there at 45 degrees and put a little line on it that one there at 45 degrees um, immediately you can see that that has gone a, a quarter of its way through there there's very little engagement as we move through to 90 degrees put a mark there and a mark there uh, again clearly this one uh, the linear capacitor has uh, moved in half of its uh, engagement uh, but this one has only gone uh, I don't know maybe a third of its engagement maybe less than that and um, as we go on to 135 degrees on each that's uh, one three five degrees um, and we'll mark those and then at 180 clearly the whole capacitor has gone in in both so they've both gone from the minimum capacitance to the maximum it's just that the linear capacitor has gone in in four equally divided steps uh, but the non-linear capacitor has gone in four very unequal steps and um, and I'll tell you why Whenever we use a capacitor like these, variable capacitors, uh, we always do so in conjunction with a coil or an inductor, if you like. And uh, there's a, a strange relationship between the coil and the capacitor. Between them, uh, they establish the resonant frequency or the tuning frequency uh, or the tank circuit frequency, all mean the same thing. Uh, but the relationship is nonlinear. It's said to have a root function. And this is the formula. And it's expressed as F equals 1 over 2 pi root LC, where F is the frequency in hertz and pi is 3.1. 141. L is the inductance in Henry's and C is the capacitance in Farad's. A more practical way to uh, express this is to say that F equals 10 to the 6 over 2 pi root LC and that way frequencies in kilohertz 
inductance is in microhenries and capacitance is in picofarads so that's a, a more usable of uh, that's a friendlier formula uh, if you're involved with radio if you're involved with other things then uh, you may not want to work in uh, kilohertz and uh, picofarads but both formulas are correct they just work in different values so the sizes of the numbers change but the principle is exactly the same okay so what does it all mean what does it matter it's worth remembering that the radio frequencies say for the uh, AM bands were issued on a 9 kilohertz or 10 kilohertz basis so the stations are evenly distributed um, uh, on the wave band and they don't interfere with one another so it's very desirable to have the uh, wave band divided in nice linear steps and uh, this satisfies uh, the engineers obsession with linearity and just whilst I'm talking about radio dials I love the Art Deco style used on some of these old vintage radios I find that very attractive for mechanical reasons it's very desirable to have the linear rotation of the capacitor associated with the linear um, movement of the pointer across the radio dial uh, but because of that root function on the bottom of the formula it gives us the problem that I've been talking about but fortunately the capacitor manufacturer has taken care of it for us by arranging for uh, progressively larger amounts of capacitance to be engaged for a given number of degrees of rotation of the shaft as compared with the uh, shaft that he, and the linear capacitor where for each um, proportion of rotation we get a proportional amount of engagement just one little point that uh, I'll mention on some uh, equipment uh, maybe a, uh, a good communications receiver or um, uh, an oscillator a, a test oscillator you may see that these outer fingers have been bent out they've been moved out slightly and uh, that is to fine trim the uh, frequency and to uh, fine trim that uh, non-linearity so, so you will see these sometimes bent out it's only on the outer veins in in each case um, if you do see that don't mess with it because uh, the chances of you improving things are very remote and the chances of you wrecking it uh, uh, are probably very high if you look at the spacing of the graduations on this dial you'll see that uh, they're all bunched together at the uh, bottom of the dial and uh, yet they are uh, spaced very far apart at the top of the dial and that is the typical frequency response uh, that uh, an LC circuit would have if a uh, linear capacitor is used so it's not being compensated for so the irregularity shows up on the dial rather than in the shape of the capacitor plate I'll put a couple of worked out examples of that formula that I showed you earlier for those interested um, okay I hope you found that interesting thanks for watching bye bye okay here's a couple of worked examples and uh, you see the first uh, set of calculations are in sort of radio values and then uh, the next set of uh, calculations are in uh, 
Henry's and Farad's but I figure you can stop and look at this uh, in your own time. So thanks for watching, uh, have fun with your maths, bye bye.